So now we're into the bonding and molecular geometry section. And bonding and molecular geometry is actually very f straightforward. Um, like a, so much of what we do, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. So let's just jump right in and lay the foundation so we can get into the more advanced topics pretty fast. So the first thing under bonding is we have to talk about something called Lewis symbols. Now there's a man, a scientist called Lewis, and, and real quick side story, a 30 second side story. Lewis, as we will see, is uh, known for a variety of things, he, but he's the electron guy. Always remember, Lewis electrons. So Lewis had this amazing idea about acids and bases, and we'll talk about this later, and he, had, he did all this stuff, and everyone was you're like, wow, man, you know, you're, you're great for the electron, but you don't know squat about anything else. And so he's actually shunned by the entire scientific community, ended up dying by himself as a hermit in California somewhere like in, he, he had like this huge mansion he sold it off to fund all of his work and even after everything he did and he surely enough was proven right later he, everyone shunned him at the time so he became a recluse locked himself in in his apartment people had to bring him food and he had his laundry sent out and ended up dying by himself penniless after all this stuff but he's become famous that now because of his theories related to electrons bonding and eventually acid the base theory so it, weird things happen in science. Just because we see the name doesn't mean these people live perfectly awesome lives. So let's talk about Lewis symbols. Shorthand notation for determining bonding electrons is what Lewis symbols is all about. It's actually this little structural thing that we'll write down on a piece of paper to help you kind of figure out where the bonds are going to go. Now, here's how we're going to do it. First thing you got to do, write down the symbol. So pick an element. Right now, pick an element and write down the symbol for the element. It doesn't matter which element you pick, choose. Any element. Okay. Now, now you have to think back for a second. You're like, oh no, he's using notation that he's using words I've seen before. Count the number of S and P electrons in the outermost energy level. LVL is level, by the way. Now, you have to go back to atomic theory. Remember when we did electron configurations? There were four sections of the periodic table. The first two columns are your S orbitals. Your last six columns are your P orbitals. Those are the only ones we care about in this section. It doesn't matter about the D's, it doesn't matter about the F's. So we're only looking at the S and P electrons. Now what you're going to do is you're going to draw dots around your symbol to represent the number of S and P electrons that are in that row of the periodic table for that element. Okay? So hopefully you've got your element. I want you to write now on, the, you know, on your paper, I want you to count the number of S and P electrons in the same row up to and including that element. Don't count D's don't count F's. And I want you to draw dots to represent each of them. Now, your question is, where do the dots go? Well, okay. The dots can only go on the top, right, bottom, and left-hand side. Now, I'll show you how I set it up in a second. You can do it any way you want, but this is the way I do it. My random element was boron. So, if I look at boron, boron's element number five. But in its row, there are only three S and P electrons. Two in the 2S, one including boron in the 2P. So I'm going to draw three dots. Now I'm going to draw them in this order. Right, bottom, left, top, right, bottom, left, top. So basically whatever side I pick to start, I'm going to go clockwise around it, going one on each side. Now you want to make sure you put one on each side before you put a second. Okay? So when I fill in the, the dots for boron, so when I fill in the dots for boron, my dots are going to go on the right, on the bottom and on the left hand side and that's the Lewis symbol for boron fairly straightforward right okay now let's move on let's try something slightly more complicated chlorine oh goodness chlorine okay so chlorine is element number 17 so even though it's got a lot of s and p electrons total you only count what's in the same row as chlorine so chlorine has seven electrons two in the two in the s five in the p so I'm going to put it in dots in that same kind of system. One on the right, one on the bottom, one on the left, one on the top, one on the right, one on the bottom, one on the left, and that's seven. So you'll notice I have in chlorine three pairs of electrons and one pair that's on one dot that's unpaired for, to give me my seven total. So let's practice this. So hopefully you've gotten the system a little bit down for your element. So now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video, do these six elements do the Lewis symbol for these six elements and then unpause and see what I've done. Okay, so I'm going to stop right now, give you a chance to write, and then I'm going to show you the answer. Okay, so by now you've gotten your Lewis symbols written. So carbon. 
Carmen is right next to boron, so boron had three, so therefore carbon has four. That's two S and two P. So I'm going to draw dots. I draw one, two, three, and four. Barium. Barium has two electrons, only in the S. So I'm going to draw two dots. One, two. Notice my two dots did not get paired up. They are going to go separate from each other. Argon is awesome because argon is, an element, is a noble gas, so therefore it's completely filled. It has two S and six P's. So I'm going to go around and around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pairs of electrons. Now iron is the weird one because iron is in the d orbital and I specifically said don't count elements that are don't count the d orbitals so if you look at iron you'll see that iron has two s and then a whole bunch of d's but we ignore the d's so we only draw the two s one two that's it so pb pb is in the same column as carbon so it's gonna have the same Lewis symbol as carbon one two three four and then arsenic. Now arsenic is a little bit different. So arsenic is in the same as nitrogen and phosphorus. So arsenic has five, two in the 2s, three in the, I'm sorry, two in the uh, 4s, and three in the 4p. So it's got one, two, three, four, five. Now right now for Lewis symbols, this is fairly straightforward and very simple. Uh, when we use this for bonding, you'll see that where we orient the dots will be very useful for us to identify how we're going to draw bonds and stuff. So, now that you've mastered Lewis symbols, now check out the podcast for bonding.